Okay, so I'm Sarah Watson-Jones and I'm a teaching fellow for the Advanced Training Partnership, or ATP. My main role is to put modules together in the realms of ruminant agriculture um, and identify experts in their field and record them giving lectures or interviews and such like and put it all together for online learners. When I was doing my degree we had to do a wildlife film and some photography and that was probably about the limits. I've done little bits of photography from my own personal interest and um, being interested in wildlife and plants generally but um, yeah in terms of editing and filming people and, and that kind of thing it was all very new to me. So we got this idea because, because we deal with um, grass basically pasture a lot um, and we talk about some of the species of grass. Most farmers mainly just plant perennial ryegrass for their pasture um, but as the pasture gets older you'll get other grass species creeping in. Um, there are feelings that we may be needing to look at other species um, to prepare for you know, changes with climate, that kind of thing. Um, but when you start to talk about different species of grass, a lot of people who are involved might not be able to recognise them. So the idea was to put a kind of online grass identification tool together based on the different pasture types. The process for photographing the grasses starts out in the field really. So we chose four different pasture types um, of sites all owned by Aberystwyth University. Uh, giving a range of new lays through to semi-natural grassland. And the idea was that we take wide shots of these sites first so you can recognise what kind of pasture you might be dealing with. And then zoom in in the field so that you can see the different species more easily. Collect those species then and bring them back to the studio. We did attempt at first to take the shots on a white background but they didn't show up very well so we opted for black and you got a much clearer picture of, of, of the different features on there. Um, and then the idea was to go through the process of trying to take a photo of the whole grass. That didn't work quite so well indoors, which is why we sat with or stuck with taking them outside. Um, and then take all the relevant features of the grass that you really need for your identification. So, um, so this one, for example, things like the ligule at the joint between the grass blade and leaf sheath. Um, on this particular one, this is Yorkshire Frog or Holcus linatus, you've got some sort of pinky striping down the bottom, so you take photos of things like that. Um, the leaf tip may vary depending on which grass you're dealing with, so sort of close-ups of everything that was relevant for identification. And then get the flowers, and um, as you can probably see, this is a little of old grass, but the these are all rather small, these little bits and pieces. Um, so putting them down on the black card here, getting the camera as close as possible and as much light in there as possible was really important for these tiny bits. Part of the photography of, of the grasses is getting the right colour, getting things clearly in focus. So well, the first thing to do once we'd set up all the lights um, was to do the white balance and make sure we've got the good proper colour of the grasses there. Um, trouble with photographic identification tools with, when it comes to plants is if the colour's a bit off it can be really confusing so trying to get as close to the right colour as possible is quite important. Then because it's all inside and it is very small we need to get enough light in there to be able to see the features of the grasses and you may be talking about something that's two or three millimetres long and you need to be able to see the stripes on the outside of that or um, the size of one part compared with another so you really do need some good clear close-up shots. So then getting the right exposure um, is quite important for getting the light in. Uh, too much exposure made the picture look a little blurry, a little bit off so you get the right level of exposure and then set the ISO to go with that. Um, and then focus in a little further again and maybe need to reset that as well for each one but but yeah very important just to get these fine detail of these small features. Um, if you can get them all right to start with and you've got your lights set up in place then you can use the same settings and the same lighting each time which makes the whole finished product just look that little bit more professional because the lighting will be the same each time round. Um, so yeah, get them as close as you can to begin with. There was occasions, depending because some of them are so small, I might have to alter the light a little bit or the exposure a little bit. Generally, if you can stick with the same ones, it just all makes the whole thing tie together much better at the end. Uh, yeah, I think if you're going to set about doing something like this, then if you can 
look online. If you can't get someone to show you around the camera, there's, there, there's lots of places you can go to online, I believe, CADA, and have a lot of useful <laughs> instructional videos um, to show you how to use the cameras. Um, look up your specific model. Uh, this was a good tip I got. And, and there's usually manuals there that will help you through. Lots of YouTube videos as well that can help you learn how to use your camera for whichever particular purpose you're, you're after, you're interested in. <laughs>